the Merchant Prince of America built the most expensive home in Manhattan. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. Today we are exploring the Stewart Mansion. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of this house. Alexander Turney Stewart was born in Ireland in 1803. Much of his time was spent at his grandfather, John Turney's house, which boasted a large collection of art and statues that would fascinate Alexander to no end. Having a taste for the finer Irish things, he wanted to capitalize on his passion. He moved to New York City, where he traded Irish linens and lace. In no time at all, demand grew so large for his high-quality textiles that he opened a brick-and-mortar store. He is credited for opening the first store in New York that used price tags in lieu of bartering or blanket pricing. It is also thought that he was the first person in New York to advertise sales and promotional discounts in retail. He successfully pioneered this retail sales strategy, and by 1848, he had opened 12 stores around the world. With his success came the nickname, the Merchant Prince of America, and the house he would build to celebrate this success would, indeed, be fit for a prince. In 1864, he set out to build his dream house. He tore down the mansion of Samuel P. Townsend at 5th Avenue and 34th Street and spent $2 million, or the modern-day equivalent of about $37 million, building his marble palace. It was designed in the Beaux-Arts style, with plaster sepalo coins, each level of the facade being divided by a stone frieze. The fourth floor was concealed by a mansard roof. At the time, it was believed to be the most expensive home to have ever been built in the United States. Traveling up the stairs, towards the front door, there would have been a one-story drop-off to either side, almost appearing as an empty moat, as the space between the sidewalk and the basement walls was dug out to allow full-height windows on every exterior wall of the servants' quarters. Making your way through the front door, you would arrive in the entrance hall, with large, old-growth fluted wood columns with intricately carved Corinthian capitals, set below a coffered ceiling with exquisite relief work set in each layer of molding. Marble statues sat high on their pedestals, above the marble floors, with Irish carpets directing your approach towards the floating marble staircase sweeping about the entrance to the reception room. Passing through curtains hung between marble door frames, you would arrive in the reception room. Painted wood paneling stretching from floor to ceiling with portraits decorating the walls. The intricately decorated ceiling mirrored the composition of the carpeted floor. The music room, decorated similarly, was located on the second floor, now with the addition of marble pilasters flanking the windows to either side of the marble fireplace set below a gilded mirror. Fine Irish furniture and antiques were set about the room, each chair upholstered with different fabric. The art gallery, stretching 50 by 30 feet, was overflowing with paintings and statues. The fresco running around the top of the room was decorated with statuary protruding from the murals. The library, also with marble architectural elements, had old-growth walnut wood panels cladding the walls with a hand-stenciled ceiling framed in by the ornate frieze. But the grandest room of them all was the drawing room. Stretching the entire width of the house and gilded to the highest standard of Gilded Age glamour, with chandeliers suspended from masterfully crafted plaster medallions protruding from ceiling murals, surrounded by gilted molding and supported by the marble pilasters between which were either windows or mirrors set in even intervals. Alexander would enjoy his palace until his passing in 1876, and his widow Cornelia would enjoy it until her passing in 1886. Afterwards, it would be the home of various clubs in New York City until about 1901, when it was inevitably torn down to make way for the Knickerbocker Trust Company building, which would face the banker's panic in 1907. The building would undergo several renovations until it became this, a rather mundane building. To see what New York City looked like around the turn of the century, make sure to check out our second channel, That Happened, where we'd repair vintage film clips, movies, commercials, and ads for your viewing pleasure. Thank you all for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. I'd also like to take a moment to say a special thank you to our This House supporters whose names you can see on screen right now. If you would like to see your name on the screen, please consider joining our membership program today. I'll see you next time on This House.